Hi everybody, welcome to City and County Credit Union's Tip Tuesday. My name is Bailey and I am so glad you're tuning in. We are talking about a topic that truly gets me out of bed in the morning. I know it's a little weird, but I am known as a budgeting nerd. I will sit down with anybody to have a conversation about budgeting, whether it's over a glass of wine, a good dinner. Um, I love to talk budgeting. And especially as we get into the holidays, it's important to remain mindful of what we're spending because in our culture, we feel like we need to keep up with the Joneses. I want a new car, I want the bigger house, I want name brand this. And not that that's always bad, but it's important to be mindful as we try to think about our spending. And so today I'm really excited to be talking with Teresa Thomas, who has been with us before. She is the creator of 50 Fun Things, and we're going to talk about how you can find joy and fulfillment. So Teresa, thank you for coming back and joining us for today. And so I would love to hear more about you and 50 Fun Things. Sure. So 50 Fun Things, um, I started it thinking it was just for me. So I was looking for more joy and fulfillment personally and professionally. I was trying to break some habits that I had gotten back into. I was wanting to dream bigger, have more experiences, um, feel less burnout, and kind of feel more hope. And so I created it for me. Other people started to notice. And they said, could you do a workshop about this? Could you write about it? Could you share some tips? And so I started doing that and it took on a life of its own. So now 50 Fun Things is a workshop. It is a couple of books now and it is a workbook with tools that anybody can use um, personally and it's also being used by teams and groups um, to bring more joy and fulfillment into people's lives personally and professionally. I love it because this is a topic we need to talk more about, especially as we continue to spend more. Um, and so I would love to hear from your perspective, how can I use 50 fun things in my personal life as I'm continuing to think about my finances? What are some examples? Well, <laughs> I never realized that fun and noticing what feels good to you is a huge clarity tool. Mm -hmm. And you touched upon this earlier, keeping up with the Joneses. Yes. A lot of times people approach not only their finances, but what they do for fun in terms of what other people think is fun or what other people think they should do that's fun. But you get to choose what feels fun and good for you. And when you do that, it provides a lot of clarity about what you say yes to, which invitations you accept, which uh, traditions you continue with or change, your spending habits. Um, is it something that you really want? Is it, uh, or is it something that you think you should want? Here's an example. A lot of people think that you should want a really nice home with lots of fabulous rooms and a beautiful place. And for me, I had a, a lovely home that I enjoyed in a great neighborhood, but when my kids were adults, I realized, oh, I really value travel. So I'm in an apartment and mm -hmm. I love it because I don't have to have those big responsibilities mm -hmm. and it doesn't fit what other people think I should think is fun, but for me, it makes me realize, oh, I have all this freedom now. So when you identify what feels good for you, it gives you a lot of clarity and it helps you to know you know, even where your boundaries are, you know? So if you're getting invited to a lot of things over the holidays, yes. you can realize, oh, you know what? Right now, I need to schedule some downtime and I'll see these people in another way. So it, it's a really good guidance tool when you get in tune with what you really want. Well, and especially around the holidays because there's always something, right? There's always a holiday party. There's always, you know, can you make this for this meal? And, and it's great to narrow down what you should spend. And so I'm throwing a, a surprise question at you because I am curious. Gift giving is such a big part of the holidays and now that we're going into Thanksgiving and we're thinking Black Friday shopping and then Christmas, I know this is designed really for you, but how do you also carry that through to the gifts you're giving other people? Sure, well, that is a great point and everybody's going to have their own circumstances, but I, I for example, highly value experiences. Mm -hmm. And so um, sometimes if you think outside of the box, that it doesn't have to be the traditional types of gifts that you've given. Now, if your family has a strong tradition, um, maybe just say, hey, this year, can we try something a little different? Uh, would you be open to you know, having experiences together, for example? So play with it and see what's, what's possible. And 
Did I, did I respond? That was excellent. <laughs> no, and it's great because it's all about breaking that taboo that we don't talk about it, right? And I think with money or like being honest of like, hey, like this is a, a really ridiculous example, but a lot of my friends like to go bowling. I don't like to bowl. And I've had to come to terms with like, I'm not gonna go because I don't value it and it's not what I'm gonna spend my money on because I know it's gonna be a $50 tab every time I go. Very, very crazy example, but it's real life. And so when I you know, wanna do a workshop with 50 Fun Things, um, do you guide it? Is it something I do by myself? What does that look like? So I can start this process. Yes, um, you can do it several ways. Uh, I do occasionally do workshops open to individuals. I also have groups bring me in, whether it's a group of friends, a family, retreats, conferences, uh, team building. There's lots of ways you can do it. So if you're interested for yourself, for your family, for your friends or your team, um, any of those things can work. And it's, it's also fun is a connector. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to get you to get to know each other more. It bonds us. It helps us know what each other cares about so that we can support each other in having those joyful lives. Absolutely. And so what are your top tips for really finding your own joy and fulfillment? What's that process look like to get in the mind frame so you can decide, here's what I value, here's what I want to focus on? Well, there's so much that I could share about that. I, mean, I, have <laughs> I love like it. 50 ideas, actually more than that, because I'm constantly thinking of more ideas. Um, but I'll share a couple things, especially leading up to the holidays, is, um, so I mentioned before, like identifying what feels joyful for you so you have clarity. However, there are some things that we don't have a, a choice in. Um, for example, maybe it's your your work, you know, holiday gathering, and it's kind of an expectation that it's that you mm -hmm. will be there. What I suggest is two things: um, look for the good. When you look for the good, you will notice the things that are joyful. If you go in, and this is the other point I'm making, is allow yourself to adjust your attitude right so it's like get curious and like think is there is there are there some fun and good things i can find about this now we had a 50 fun things alumna tell me that after she did 50 fun things every year she had to go to her husband's holiday work party <laughs> yeah and she dreaded <laughs> it and and then she said i'm just gonna get curious about this and look for the good i love that she ended up saying, you know, that thing is actually really fun. But I was just <laughs> noticing all the things I didn't like about it. And then I'm like, oh, I love it. I can't wait for next year. And then she volunteered to be on the planning committee. Oh my gosh, that's a full circle moment. I love it, I love it. And this concept, you know, if you're watching this, you might think, yeah, that's really simple. But really slow down your day and take a peek at it because Teresa talks about something really important is be thoughtful with your decisions. And for me, you know, when it comes to spending and, and you know, looking for the good, I get this thing called buyer's remorse. And so in the heat of the moment, I think I really need something, and especially on the holidays, it's a brand new item, you know, whether it's the latest, you know, um, AirPod or, or whatever it is. And I think I need that because it's gonna bring me joy. So how do you stop your brain from tricking yourself that it is going to bring you joy, especially when it comes to making a purchase? Well, this is something that I, that I do is I pause. I first of all, pause and think, okay, is this something that I make, need to make a decision on now? And if so, the number one question I ask myself is, will I regret not making this decision? So mm -hmm. it helps to give me clarity. So I'm like, oh, this is so cute. I love this top. I think I need it. And I'm like, okay, do you really need another top? Um, but then if I think, no, I've been looking for a top like this. I've never seen a top like this. It's making me excited for where I'll wear it. Then I know, yeah, I would regret not getting that top. It's going to bring me joy. It's going to be worth the money I've spent on it because it's going to light me up. I'm going to use it. If it feels like, well, so-and-so thinks that I should probably get this, or <laughs> everybody else has this, or yeah, I, it, it's expensive, but yeah, I'm just going to get it. Sometimes those things you can just put on pause and ask yourself, will I regret not getting this? Will this make my life better? I love that. Yeah, slowing down, especially around this busy time. And so if people want to get connected with you, 50 Fun Things, how do we do that? Well, it's super easy. Just go to 50funthings.com, the number 50, and you will see blog posts by former participants about how they used 50 fun things, so some inspiration. And then you'll also see ways to connect with the tools and the workshops 
and, and myself. So yeah, check it out. And I'm excited for how you're opening, how the city and county credit union is really uh, focused on helping their members to feel that sense of connection, community, and joy tied to their finances and their well-being. Oh, thank you so much for being here because you just sealed the deal perfectly with the bow um, because, you know, for you as a member watching this, we do have a ton of great resources, um, whether you're starting to plan your gift list, you know, we have a great worksheet that you can do to say, who am I buying for? What am I going to, you know, purchase for them? Did I buy it? Yes or no? Keep it simple. And then, you know, in connection with Tracy here, you're really going to have the best holiday season that doesn't just impact your spending for now, but also as you go into the new year. Um, and that is our tip Tuesday. We will see you next month right here, probably with a little um, colder temperatures. Have a great week, everybody.